with a Nestor Ramos. Um, I'm Jeanette Wiergaard, your presenter for Flex. Now today we are doing it a bit different via Zoom. Inesh, welcome to the show. And I can't wait to hear what you have to tell us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. I'm so excited, but I have like so many feelings inside of me. I'm like nervous and excitement and <laughs> yeah, just, it's good to be here. we're just taking a very chilled you know a chilled mood so don't be too nervous <laughs> yeah, no no i'll ride the wave <laughs> absolutely okay Inesh, can you just tell us a bit more of what it is that you're doing introduce yourself to those who doesn't know what you're busy with and yeah okay um, I'm Inesh Dos Ramos, as the name mentioned, um, also known as Inesh Dos Ramos Miller because I'm married, okay? Mm -hmm. But my business name, as my husband also states, just like, just give it Dos Ramos like that. <laughs> okay, what I do is I own a company, health and wellness company called Rutlalia. Um, on our platform, I am the life coach as well as the movement coach. So I help everyone or who comes to me with living abundantly. That's what my company vision is set on. And that's what the word Lalia means. It comes from John 10 verse 10 that says life and life in abundance. Mm -hmm. So I truly believe that's our gift and everyone just go get it. Yeah. So I help you go get it. Absolutely. So can you tell us what with Lalia actually entails? What you do with your clients? Okay. Um, with Lalia is built on three pillars. We have life coaching, health coaching, and movement. Um, I'm partnered with my cousin, who's a dietitian, and she does the health coaching segment. And then I do life coaching and the movement coaching. Okay. What it really generally works like is for the health coaching, for instance. Um, if you sign up for that, we have different packages. And the ultimate goal of our program is, is freedom, is living abundantly. So with health coaching, you'd learn what your own nutrition looks like, um, what it can look like for you. Because uh, sometimes we get so caught up in no, but I must look a certain size and I must be a certain this and that. But we rarely ask ourselves, well, what, what do I want? What do I want to look like? What does it look like for me? You know, mm -hmm. and that's what it's about. And, and when it comes to the life coaching aspect, um, I go through a lot of programs of self-discovery, of learning how to take care of yourself mentally, especially. That's what life coaching in general is about. It's just mental fitness. And then movement coaching, physical fitness. Um, Movement coaching at the, t at the moment, I have a, a movement class that I give every Tuesday and Thursday, also via online, um, that we just stretch, relax, animal flow, dance, whatever comes to, to the space, we just move, you know, okay. and that's what I believe for my company is general freedom to allow you to find your own way. Yeah. So what would you hope to achieve with what you're doing? Honestly, um, you know, years ago, uh, Lalia, the word itself came to me. It was in the, in the season where hashtag YOLO was trending. Um, and I prayed about it and I said, you know, I don't want to live YOLO. I want my own thing. I want to figure out what says me. And God gave me John 10 verse 10 and it says, I gave you life and life in abundance. And the acronym for life and life in abundance is Lalia. So for me, that's the point of everything that I do. I genuinely believe that everyone has been gifted an abundant life and it looks different to everyone on a different platform. And I really, my point is to help you find that, you know, what does abundance look like for you? Where are you happy? Where do you love to dream and just be free. Well, when you probably got that the acronym, the LALIA, then was it like a eureka moment? Like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that's that. <laughs> oh yeah it really was and at the time um i would tell so many people about it because i was so excited and they'd look at me and they're like that's cool that's a little bit crazy i'm like whatever you can yolo yeah. i am going to lalia yeah. okay i'm gonna lalia because <laughs> it's mine and 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 it, i've had it for years because that was probably i think 2010 somewhere there that i got lalia and only now i'm having the privilege of sharing this on a, on a professional platform with people and saying, you know, what is it that you want? What does abundant life look like for you? And let's find it for you. No, oh, that's so dope. Um, you only recently opened the business, I would say. Um, 
Why only now? Well, uh, over the time I was really, I was freelancing a lot. Um, I was 10 years of my life I spent being a performing artist. And then um, so like three years ago, I had my boy and then I moved into the corporate world more. And in the corporate world, I started noticing the importance of a professional aspect of what it is that I do. Because I was a freelancing yoga instructor for a long time before I got certified and I also got certified like two years ago. So in the process of changing from one career to the next one, I realized the importance of corporate wellness, of, of wellness in general for people and how to give it on a platform. Like for me, I'm a, uh, generally my husband likes to uh, make fun of me for it. He says, like, I'm a free spirit. Right? I, I flow wherever the wind takes me. I was yeah. like, I'm not here today. You know? <laughs> so I had to learn how to put it in a system that's like, this is how I can help you. Because I did it a lot on a freelancing basis. People would just randomly come to me and say, how do you do this? How do you do that? And I'd be like, okay, I can show you, you know? But as opposed to moving from, hey, I can show you randomly to now having an actual platform, say like, this is our page, this is our website, this is how we do business, and this is where you can get a hold of us. So you can say I've really been doing it for a while, but um, I've become business savvy or maybe an yeah. adult would like <laughs> let's call it business savvy i mean i think everybody sometimes yeah. can figure out adulting in their own little way <laughs> yes <laughs> very much <laughs> well, as a wellness coach and um what would you say should people do during these difficult times i mean COVID 19 has dumped everyone in this almost like a depressive state and the whole country, mm. I would say, because we're constantly losing people close to us. And, you know, it's difficult to deal with that grief all the time because mm. it's like you just started dealing with the one and then another one comes. How would you say would be the mm. best way to look forward and to heal yourself? I think, honestly, um, at this point, I think one of the hardest lessons I've learned over the years, I was very emotionally numb person for a long time. I was, throughout high school mostly, I was very depressed. Um, and throughout university, I learned the important lesson of feeling my feelings, um, acknowledging that they're there and going through it and not just putting it in a box and packing it away. So if I have anything to say regarding that, I, I know right now our country is in a very sad state. Um, we're losing a lot of people, like you said, and, and we're feeling it. And that's the most important thing. We have to feel it together. You know, we sometimes we are over over optimism, if that's even a way to explain it. Yeah. You're like, no, but everything's gonna be okay. No, but it's gonna be, you know, you wanna just chase the sadness away. I'd say just feel it, you know, like sit in conversations with people that are not okay and hold their hand for as much as you figure it if you can, you know, if it's calling them or just sitting there in the sadness. And it's a difficult thing to do. Sometimes it requires silence. Sometimes it requires just being there. You know, um, I want to share that it's important, like if someone's going through a depressive episode, like you can go pick them up, take them for a drive in the sun, um, make food for them. You know, at this point, that, that's all we can do for each other. Sometimes I'm going to need somebody to make some tea for me. And then tomorrow, somebody else might need the tea for me you know so all I have to say about that is that we be present right now and not try to to push it away run away from it because this is real um and eventually when we're through this we're going to be a part of history and we're going to get to tell our kids you know what happened when I was your age okay <laughs> so yeah just feel it and, yeah. and try to, to deal with it uh -huh. You know, what I also noticed is that, um, I don't know if you watched the video where the guy ran away from Karatura Hospital, the patient, the oh, yeah, 19 yeah. patient. And I was like, it's yeah. these difficult times. We still have that comedy, I would almost say. But that person was actually going also through an emotional thing, not seeing his or her pa parents and family and friends. So, yeah. Mm. And um, yeah, no, definitely. 
Um, you also recently had the neck injury. Um, yeah, explain how your journey was, especially as a person <laughs> that likes to move and everything and how you got through that as well. Okay, so that neck injury was totally accidental. I didn't even think it was a big deal because it was my birthday and, and as an expressive, excited person, I told yeah. my sister, I want to go jump trampolines or whatever. <laughs> And so then we get there and we jump and I land on my neck without even realizing that that is what happened, right? Uh -huh. So I land there and then <laughs> I land in the, in the day after I, I, I'm at home and everything is fine. And then, my goodness, the next morning I get up and I can't move properly and I'm like, okay, what's happening? So then I go to the doctor and I tell me, no, I've got to rest for about six weeks. And I can tell you that for me, movement has always been therapy. I need to move to be okay, you know, because it's the time that I listen to worship music. It's the time that I, I speak and process my thoughts and just go through everything that I have to, you know. And um, it's been difficult, but it has also taught me different ways of, of moving, different ways of operating, you know. I'd have, for instance, only like a certain set of things. Like I'd, I'd love doing headstands and handstands and things like that. And then I learned that walking is also a way. Uh, and besides just this movement, I think the fact that I hurt my neck helped me realize that there are other ways to healthily express mental stress. Um, things like journaling, things like writing, speaking, because for me, communication has also always been like a stumbling block. Like I can have all of these feelings, but I don't know how to say how I feel in the moment, you know. And I've learned the importance of acknowledging my feelings, even if I sit alone and just breathe for a second and say, I feel tired, you know. It brings it out of your mind and it brings it into a place where it feels like you can actually hold it and look at it and be like, that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. You know, you're, we're all right. So I like that you, uh, uh, that you have put it that way, that when you release it out of your mind, it's like it's a tangible thing. And I don't think a lot of people realize um, the, the importance of talking and what it can actually do. I mean, we all have to go through a stage where you find out that, yes, it probably won't, you know, solve the problem at that moment but it will make you feel better and it maybe will also make other people understand you better yeah mm, true because sometimes like we we embody <laughs> i make fun of myself for that i embody health a lot i'm a she yeah. you know i can get bottled up with so many things and then i'm like ah i'm just ah. and then <laughs> it helps to sit down and be like okay okay calm breathe what do you feel you know and that's why I also there's this cute picture that says that there's nothing wrong with going to therapy because there's like this ball of yarn in your head and all therapy does is just single out the little pieces of yarn for you. Yeah. you know? And generally that's what talking does in general. You don't even need to go see a therapist. You just need to sit there and if you don't want to talk to anybody, talk to yourself. Yeah. Get it out of your head. Mm -hmm. It helps a lot. No, definitely. Um, so what would you say, um, yeah, we should do to live a holistically, you know, healthy lifestyle? You know, you mentioned the, uh, um, the talking and your mental health and the movement, but what will bring it all together? And as a nation, I've noticed, I don't know, I can't speak for a lot, but what I've seen, what I've observed was that, you know, we tend to neglect ourselves um, uh, um, in terms of our health and our wellness and everything. What would be the next step to just start or even just continue your journey? Hmm. Uh, you know, I've noticed something very important. I was talking to my mom the other day and she, she said to me, you know, a lot of things that we don't notice at this time is mental health pre-COVID, mid-COVID, and post-COVID. Yeah. You know, nobody talks about that kind of stuff of what's happening to you mentally. You know, we want to just 
we're in survival mode and we're like, deal with this, deal with that, deal with that. And you don't process any of the things that you're going through. I'd say one of the things that I found that really works for me, because of the fact that we're in such an unpredictable time, you don't know what happens tomorrow. Something that helps me a lot is holding on to something that is predictable. Okay. And I mean, in the, in the smallest sense, um, I have a routine every day. I set my alarm and I, I will do movement every day at 4, 4 p.m. Um, I set my alarm and at 8 o'clock every night, we switch off everything. We listen to worship music and thereafter I read for my boy. So those things for me, it's just three small things. But those things for me are things that I can hold on to that I know tomorrow they're going to happen, um, regardless of whatever else doesn't happen. You know, and for me, that has held me to the ground. I understand because you know when everything started changes, we didn't realize that our routine was taken away from us because it's a routine to get up in the morning, get ready, go to work. When you get to work, you drink your cup of coffee, you do this, you do that, you do that, and every day without noticing it, you repeat that pattern, mm -hmm. and that pattern kept us safe because human beings need to function in a predictable, unpredictable manner. Not in total chaos. Yeah. So the thing I'd say with that is find something that a peaceful place for you. You know, there's actions that are that that don't need thoughts. You know, if you've been a driver for maybe twenty years, uh -huh. you're driving around. You notice that you're driving, and it's just second nature. You know, find stuff like that, like washing the dishes. We all wash the dishes. We all know how to do that. Just wash the dishes, just stand there, you know? Find those things that don't require for you to bring a lot of mental capacity and in a place where you're already tired. Hold on to something that just tomorrow morning, even if you need to set your alarm, go outside and watch the sun come up, you know? Because that's gonna happen for sure. Mm. Nothing can change that. And that's what we need, you know? Hold on to things that make you feel. Okay, I'm sure of that. So it's going to be okay. Yeah. No, I think we can end it there. That was just a beautiful way to, you know, conclude things. And thank you for your willingness to do this interview as well. And we can't wait to see what you will be doing in the future. And yeah, all the best with your business. And I hope people will realize how important wellness is as a whole. Because wellness is not a separate thing. It's not just physical exercise. It's not just yes. meditating and saying, um, you know? Yeah. No, but it's yeah. everything. It's, it's your food. It's your sleep. It's your exercise. It's your thinking. It's all of those things. And it's a mm -hmm. delicate, delicate balance. One thing that I wanted to add before we end. Yesterday, I had this image of, you know, if you think of your mind as a house, um, sometimes you need to unpack things and throw things away. And in the generation we live today, we've become an information hoarding house. Like you go into your house and sometimes you find things that you're like, oh, when did this thing get here? And you collected that information a long time ago. And it's just so important to unpack, to spring clean, to let things go, you know, and to, to find the balance of what works for you. That's yeah. the most important thing. Oh, awesome. Lovely. Thank you so much, Inesh. And we'll see each other again. It's definitely not goodbye. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Pleasure. All right, then. Bye. Ciao. Recording.